after studying law in Bombay? So I was set to practice with you know either Ashok Desai or Mickey Chagla and I came to Madras for this vacation and a cousin of mine was in government. He said, you know, don't waste your time, go and meet lawyers. So I met a few, including Mr. Chidambaram, etc. And uh, I met Govind Swaminathan. He had just then resigned as Advocate General. Um, and I went to see him. And uh, he sat me down, it was in the High Court. And the first question he asked was, he said, uh, why don't you give up the law? The first question. And I said, I said, you know, I'm too far gone, but you know, why do you say that? And then he said, don't you see what's happening in the profession? Uh, courts are uh, being, you know, courts are losing their place. There is no place for law in this country. Um, it's, it's a dictatorship taking root, um, you know, etc., etc. So why do you want to go and join government? I later realized that was a kind of standard way of testing whether you're interested. So I said, uh, I said, I agree with what you're saying, but you know, do you, do you think it's irreversible? And he said, I think it's irreversible. And I said, uh, I said, I think it's not. So he said, why do you think it's not? And you know, I was 24 then, I was a cheeky fellow. So I said, I said, look, I'm 24, I'm an idealist. You obviously fall into neither category. And that's why I think it's not. And I swear, I thought this man is going to pitch me out over that balcony and that's the end of my law career, okay, and my life. But he said, uh, he says, come and see me tomorrow. So I went and saw him. And we spent an hour, he chatted, told me about how he'd started and how he'd done, and he was Advocate General, now he'd resigned. And somewhere in the course of that conversation, I got the feeling that I could join him, okay? I got that feeling, and I think within a second and a half, I had no, the foggiest, you know, notion I had of ever coming to Madras to practice. In a second and a half, I knew that I was going to come and join that man. I can't explain it. Even now, I cannot explain it. I went back, told my parents I'm moving to Madras, and they said, you must be nuts. They said, all your friends are here. You've been chairman of the Students' Union. You know lawyers here. This is the commercial capital of this country. There's so much work. Why are you going to Madras to work there in that, you know, back or backwards place, uh, joining a man who's then 69 years old? I said, I don't know, but I'm going. Okay. So I came to Madras and started work with him. And he's, I think, possibly the most significant person in my life, yes. Um, I mean, apart from my parents, parents, your parents give you a great deal, but apart from that, I think Govind was there. He was an amazing man, you know, he was a, he had a brilliant, terrific personality. And if you saw him, it was like, you know, Alec Guinness, playing Govind Swaminathan. A terrific personality, um, British accent, first class, super diction, wonderful advocate, but more than all that, a very fine human being. Okay. And really, I think I took shelter under him. Yes. Um, and he took care, he took care of me. So all of all that, you know, his personality, um, and he taught us how to work on cases. The first time I worked on a case for him, I, you know, I prepared this huge brief of, you know, uh, the law points, cases. And he took one look at it, and he said, look, don't go to the law, go to the facts. Get your facts right, and when you do that, the law will speak to you from the facts. And I think that's the single most important teaching I've ever received. Get your facts right, and the law will come to you from the facts. He also looked at that brief, and he said, he said, if a cat dips its paws in a bottle of ink and walks across a page, it will make more sense than this bloody fellow's handwriting. <laughs> so, my handwriting hasn't changed, it's as bad as ever. Um, he taught us that. The other thing he taught us was that the most important thing is your reputation. You know, um, you can lose it like that. And if you've lost it, you no one get it back. And it's the single most important thing for you in your practice. The reputation, the credibility that you have, the respect that the judges give you. Um, and then of course the value of hard work. You know, he would prepare his briefs meticulously. 
when he was in court arguing, it was like effortless. But that's because there's so much preparation that went on before. So, you know, I came because of him. And uh, for years I was part of his chambers. And even when I was ready to get my own chambers after I became a senior advocate, um, I didn't leave him. I had my own practice, I ran my own law firm, I became a senior advocate, but I didn't leave him. Which, which is very uncommon, you know. Uh, you set up your law firm, you, you leave, you yeah, become sure. a senior advocate. I always stayed with him right till the end, I never left. What are your memories of the early days at the bar? It's not easy for a young person to start off. My memory of the Madras bar when I joined, um, as I said, you know, I had this sterling person who, who was who, under whose shadow I was, under whose shade I was. Um, and I must tell you one thing that, you know, the Madras bar is, is a more conservative bar. Um, the fees here are not as high as the fees people charge in, in Bombay and Delhi. In many ways, it's a simpler, you know, bar. And I think, uh, you know, a far simpler place. I mean, I've seen pleadings which my friends roll out in, in Bombay, you know. And if you look at pleadings, the way, you know, plaints and petitions are drawn up in, in Madras, this is far simpler, far more direct, get to the point very quickly. But that's an illustration, yeah. It's a far simpler place. And um, one thing which I, you know, um, I was new here. I didn't have friends from law college, I studied in Bombay, so I didn't have friends from law college here. <clears throat> but I've always had uh, from people here an extraordinary amount of kindness and affection. You know, I've been really lucky that way. Whether it's from judges or, you know, senior lawyers or my peers at the bar, I've always been very well treated. And uh, that's a great, you know, it's, it's a great good fortune. Um, and even now, you know, okay, 34 years now at the bar here, it's still a pleasure to walk down the corridor and to find youngsters coming up and greeting you and, you know. Um, what has changed, sir? I mean, 34 years is a long time to be associated with any profession. And uh, not when you're at the bar. <laughs> My senior had a sign on his table, it says, uh, old lawyers never die, they just lose their appeal. <laughs> so 34 years is not a very long time at the bar. We guys tend to go on, yes, uh, in more, more senses than one. Um, what has changed? Quite a few things actually. One, I think the nature of practice has changed from essentially land and property cases. Um, those I think are in the decline. And now it's a lot about writ petitions, administrative work. So civil suits have gone down and the writ petitions have gone up, yes. Plus there's this tremendous more variety now, you know, different lines of practice. When I joined, what did you have? You had civil, criminal, tax, labor, crime, that kind of thing, okay? But now you have such uh, niche uh, categories. I mean, you have uh, people specializing in one form of taxation, you know, people specializing in arbitrations, um, and if you look, you know, a little wider than that, you have cyber, you have intellectual property, you have patents on one side, you have trademarks on the other. Um, you have multiple specializations these days. So that's another thing, okay? Um, the third is I think there's much more opportunity for juniors now. Uh, much more opportunity. Uh, because of the greater number of cases. And also because I think people are coming out from law school now far better equipped. I mean, we walked into law school, we just took a degree certificate and went there and we said, yeah, you know, we'll give you admission. But look at how difficult it is now to get admission. So they come out of law school, you know, far better prepared, they've done, they've got moots, they've done, you know, research, a whole lot of things. Um, so that's a great difference, okay. Um, I think also today we expect more from the junior uh, in terms of sheer, you know, basic fundamentals, uh, plus the capacity to research. Okay. I think juniors also have a greater scope to actually get in and argue case. I'm talking about the bar now, okay, the, the litigated practice. Um, judges would like to see young people argue cases, not just stand up and say, please give me an adjournment. And today with so many more courts and so many more cases, 
the chances for a junior to actually do that case are so much more because you know, if you have a busy senior, he's not going to be able to handle everything. So you're bound to go to court and say, please give me an adjournment. And, but if you've read your papers, yes, and because most judges ask, you know, they, they ask. If they think you're somebody who can, you know, stand up and say something, they'll ask you. Um, you know your facts. And if you say, yes, I know the facts, then a judge is really all out to help that junior. One, they'll never dismiss your case. Two, they will in fact help you. You state the facts, the judge will try and find the point of law for you, even if you haven't found it perfectly. So it's a great opportunity actually for Julia. Yeah. The one thing that I find a little cautionary is that, um, you know, juniors are adept at finding case law now. When they get it like that, yes, they go, sorry. They, they go to the computer and they get it straight off. But I think somewhere they miss out on the reading that we did to pick up that case law. You know, if I had to get a case under the Transfer Property Act, Section 52, whatever, I would have to read commentaries, four or five commentaries, read a couple of hundred pages to get that particular case. But that gave me that reading and that knowledge, okay? Today, that same case, my junior will pick out in, you know, five minutes. But I think that reading is missing out on that. That's one, um, that's one thing I think which is a 